Okay, how would you feel if you could create this too? Well, I'm going to break this drawing down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine, so that you can have a go, create this, and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, we're going to break this down into steps so that you learn about the painting process and techniques, but also about the app that I'm using, Procreate. But that isn't to say you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. Within the app Procreate, in the canvas information here, the dimensions that I've chosen are the default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. And then also the color profile settings, I've chosen the sRGB code, the one that ends in 2.1. And again, it's here on the list by default within the Procreate app. Also within the app by default are all the brushes that I'm going to be using. So you don't need to go and download any at all. So I'm going to be using within airbrushing, the soft brush, the medium brush and the medium hard brush too. So the top three. Possibly within inking I might use the studio pen. As yet I'm undecided, but we'll see. But definitely within organic I'm going to be using an amended version of the rainforest brush. So I'll just reset it and I will amend it later on. But I will explain that very clearly at that point. Then finally, for the color palette, I've chosen a selection of colors. And if you tap on a particular color, go to the value section here, you'll notice an area called hexadecimal where you can put your codes one at a time and press enter. The color appears up here and then you can just tap it into this palette area. All of the codes are down in this video description. So just need to copy and paste them into this box one at a time. Or also next to the codes in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the whole color file for free to save you some time. And Patreon is also the place where you can support this channel and gain access to exclusive content, such as extended versions of most of these tutorials. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people who do support me over at Patreon. It really does make an enormous difference to my ability to keep moving forward with this channel. So thank you so much. And with all of that said and done, we're going to get started. So the first thing we're going to do on my layers, layer one, I'm going to go to little color circle, first color on the top row. I'm going to drag from that color circle into the canvas and release. And that's just flood filled and got rid of that white background. I'm going to create a new layer. I prefer to keep things on separate layers just in case we need to tweak and adjust any of these details. Just makes it a little bit easier later on. So we'll create a new layer, layer two. I'm going to go to our colors. We're going to use the second color on the top row. And we're going to go to our brushes. We're going to go to the organic rainforest brush. Now we are going to amend it. So we're going to tap on the brush and we're going to change the spacing from 27 all the way up to about 50% and click done. And now with this brush and that second color on the top row, we're going to put the brush size at about 10% and 20% opacity. And then just literally halfway along, we'll do a stripe of that. And underneath it, another stripe. Then I'm going to go to the airbrushing soft brush. And I'm going to put that pretty big as well. We'll put it up to maybe even larger at 20%. Put that also at 20% opacity. And then just from the bottom, I'm going to start blending this up. So we're just filling in that bottom area a little bit. You can give it a couple of passes just to blend it upwards. And then we've created kind of a subtle texture. And we've only just given it a couple of passes there. I think that's probably sufficient. The sense that there's kind of distant trees affected by mist in the background there. We're going to go to our layers and create a new layer, layer three. Back to my colors, I'm going to use the third color on the top row. I'm going to stick with the soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to put it even bigger. I'm going to put it up to maybe 40% size and a bit stronger, maybe 30% opacity. And then I'm just going to build in from this side and build in from this side just to shut down some of the light. Let's do it a couple of times on each side. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur that in to about the 50% and deselect. Go to my layers, create a new layer, layer four. I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to choose the fourth color now on the top row. I'm going to go back to my brushes. I'm going to use the medium brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to have the brush size at about 5%, we'll put it 100% opacity, which is going to look really dark initially, and that's not a problem. We have ways of subduing it. I'm just going to have a kind of jutting rock here that just maybe cuts in. 
before it returns to the ground. And maybe something over here as well. Something like this. Close it at the top and bottom. That enables us just to drag and drop and drag and drop. Clearly, we've got a little bit of an anomaly there. We can just go in and fill that in. Easy to resolve. Then we can go to the layer, tap on a little N, go to the opacity, and we can turn that down to any level that we think is appropriate. Now, I don't want it to be too dominant at this stage, so I'm going to put it down to about 40%. Then on that layer, I'm going to go to the smudge and tap on it, and I can change the brush. So I'm going to put it to the organic rainforest brush. And again, it's still set to the 50% spacing, which is perfect. And I'm going to put that down to maybe about 3% size and 100% opacity. And then I'm just going to go along the edge and just make it less distinct as an edge, just make it more untidy. You can do that on both sides, just push it generally inward and go back into the shape a little bit as well. But I'm, I'm typically pushing it outwards into the scene a little bit more. When it comes further down, I'm going to do a little less of that. Just concentrate on maybe pushing it downward. So at the top, I'm happy for a more green foliage, kind of top of trees and things to be emerging up there. But then as we come further down, I just want to have it less apparent. So just push it down after about halfway, maybe just a little bit more there. Now go back to that layer. I, I feel like I want to actually narrow the gap there. And this is something that you can do just as easily. So we'll go to the selection freehand. So I'm just going to trace around, go all the way around here, close the loop, and we've selected that half. So we can go to the transform, freeform, and just stretch it this way a little bit more. And if I wanted to do the same on the other half, I can do the same. So selection, freehand, draw around, close the loop, uh, transform, freeform, pull it this way a bit more deselect and that's just narrowed the gap a little bit which i think will work better i'm also going to take that entire layer go to the adjustments the gaussian blur i'm just going to blur that across to about five percent and deselect or perhaps move on to a new layer so layer five we will again go back to the organic rainforest brush we'll stay with the fourth color on the top row three percent size 20 percent opacity and i'm just going to start scribbling in bringing out some darker colors, some darker textures, a little bit back from the edge. Now, what I don't want to take it all the way to the very outer edge of the canvas. I just want to start building in some areas here where we have darker tones. We'll add some nice richer tones over the top as well, but we're just going to start with this to begin with. It is quite a cool, quite subdued color. Now, please bear in mind that my camera may shift and slightly change the look of some of these colors. So if your colors look a little bit off, a little bit different, then don't worry, as long as you've used the color palette or the codes that I provide, then you will be using the correct colors. So don't worry too much. So I'm just scribbling over this area generally. And I could go with a darker opacity, but I want to build up more texture rather than less. So I'm happy to spend a little time scribbling over this area. Again, not all the way to the edge. We can have it kind of fragmenting off into some texture, but I don't want to take it all away. And we'll bring it down and there'll be other elements that largely cover big areas here, but we'll start to work it in anyway. And we'll do the same over on this side. They're very easy really, it just takes a few moments, a minute or two, just to go over and over these areas again nudge it towards the edge but not really committing to taking it all the way go over it several times just to really start to build in that concentration we can really start to see some of that darkness or saturation change in tone coming through which i think is starting to nudge it towards where we need it to be i'm going to move it along miss a color we might come back just to use that color and add some variation but we're going to go along to the sixth color and we're going to start building this in as well. And it's going to start nudging up a note or two in terms of tone. Perhaps we'll even turn it up a little bit more as well. 30% which means it should start to get in there a little bit more quickly. And then we're just pushing that even further on both sides like so. 
I'd rather do things tentatively and build it up gradually rather than going in too much, too saturated and then struggling to think how to dial it back. It's much easier to start subtle and just build it up this way. Okay, on this entire layer, I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna blur it in again to about the 5% and click done. I'm gonna to go to the soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use the sixth color on the top row, put it at maybe 5% size, 20% opacity, and I'm just gonna push these tones a little bit further. We've got some of the texture in there now, which is great, but I feel like I just need to push that dark tone a little bit more, and I might just start to merge it down to the outer edge, although we're not gonna see much of it. There will be the side of the bridge or the bridge to one side over at this area. I think it does as well. So you just start to suggest the tones that we're gonna have over here. It's gonna help us just understand the image and start to see it a little bit better. And we'll do the similar and the thing over at this side Again, just nudge it over to the edge in about the center area. And then also just go over here a little bit and a mixture of pressing it lightly. And because if you press it on really hard, you're gonna get that edge. So when you get to the edge there where we've got the texture, just press more lightly so we can build it up in a more subtle way. We don't want to obliterate the nice textures that we've got. We want to build it up more gradually. I'm not gonna to worry too much about the lower sections. We're gonna add more things there anyway. We'll go to our layers and we'll create a new layer, layer six. Moving along to the really nice vibrant color, which is the last color on the top row or the eighth color if you're counting. And we'll go to the rainforest brush still. We'll put it much lower this time, maybe down into the top end of 2% and about 30% opacity. And then just at these areas, we're going more with a horizontal motion to create some bands and kind of stripes and shapes that suggest that we've got some light and sun that's just catching on here and bringing out a really nice kind of vibrant green. And then as we get to this area, we can have it just sort of dissipating out and disappearing. We can go over that a few times in some places to really build up the vividness. And then we've got a nice sort of split that runs between them. So we don't want it to be so subtle that we don't notice it. So go over it a few times if you need to. And you can start to see the impact there. And then we'll go over here, maybe slightly less tidy over on this side and that's fine. As long as we're building in some of that color and light build it in towards this edge as well and again we can return to scribbling it in if necessary might just put it back up again to five percent and just lightly same settings just lightly scribble it in over here so bringing some of that nice fresh green over towards the edge as well not taking away from the more subdued colors it's just adding to it then just a couple of it over here, not too much. Just a little bit of it over here, not too much. We will return to these areas, but we're gonna go forward. We're gonna create another layer, layer seven. So with the soft brush with an airbrushing and the first color on the middle row, we're gonna put the brush size down to maybe 2%, size 80% opacity. And then I'm just gonna do a little marker, just ever so slightly upwards of halfway same on each side and we'll probably do something down here another marker another marker roughly equivalent it's not quite thirds these two sides are shorter not as wide as the middle gap by quite a margin really so we might even make that more exaggerated push it this way even more then we're going to go upwards again this doesn't need to be perfect do a few passes of that just to get it like so and then from this point, we're gonna create a curve. Now, if you take it to the other one and hold it, then it will snap to a nicer shape for us automatically, which is perfect. Then from this one, we're gonna have a slight more gentle slope. So we can just feed it in a little bit to initially. And we're gonna to attempt to do it freehand, create the same width all the way across. Now you might not be the best sketching curves and that's okay because when we get to here, we can just do another line from there to there, hold it, and it will create that bit of the shape for us. And again, it might not be perfect, and I wouldn't worry too much. Just go to the edges, close up those edges, firm them up a little bit, do the same on here. Again, don't worry too much about neatness. 
We're then just going to drag into that area and let it flood fill. Now I'll try that again. Watch what I'm doing. I'm holding down and then I'm sliding it to the right a bit more and it does start to close up some of these shapes. But if it hasn't done completely, it isn't really that difficult just to go along and close them up. And it's done that because we're using the soft brush, which has a softer edge, it isn't that well defined. So when we do flood fill, it doesn't flood fill right up to the edge quite as neatly, but it isn't a problem. That's the basic shape that we're gonna work with. Then I'm gonna slide and duplicate that layer. The bottom version, I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, hue, saturation, and brightness, and turn the brightness down to none. Then go to selection, put it on uniform, and pinch it in from the corner. Shuffle it around. We want it to be kind of indented, smaller version in that area. So that will do roughly. And you can see it doesn't meet the ground. And again, that doesn't matter. We're gonna have rocks and other things obscuring it anyway. And I don't even care about little anomalies like that. We're gonna do foliage and other things that are hanging down that will obscure that anyway. We'll go to the top layer and create a new layer, layer nine. We'll go back in with the rainforest brush within organic. We're going to use the fourth color on the middle row. 2% size, maybe 80% opacity. And we'll just run a line of this, roughly speaking, hugging that kind of top edge, like so. And we can broaden it up. We can bring it a little bit further down as well. Maybe not have it as a complete line. Have it as a few more taps to keep it a bit more broken, perhaps. And it might be a little bit subtle at this stage, and that's fine. You might not see it too clearly, but you will do. We're then going to move along to the fifth color. Again, pretty low, maybe even lower on the 2% at the bottom end of that range. And we still have it at the 80%. So I'm going to start tapping in kind of sideways dashes and bringing in some of that texture and that color. Now it's a much stronger, more vivid green, so I just need to be a little bit wary of not adding too much. And we just keep building that across. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and I'm okay for it as it gets lower down, just to have it kind of fragment more. So what we want ideally is some of this initial cooler green still be showing through in patches. And that's there for a reason. So we don't want to completely fill it in and make it so dense in these highlighted colors that there's no gaps at all. I don't mind it so much at this top edge, but as it comes further down into this area, I'm just rotating it. Sometimes it's easier to work with an image when it is rotated, so feel free to do this too. Although by doing this, you can lose the greater context of the image. So I do try to keep it roughly kind of stationary or in the correct rotation, the correct position, just so that you can understand what I'm doing. But yeah, feel free yourself to rotate it, work it however you find comfortable to do so. And it is important. Okay, so once we've laid the groundwork of that texture there a little bit, we can go backwards to layer seven, which had the initial kind of bridge shape, and we'll switch to the second color on the middle row. Same, same color we're using on the shadow or underside of the bridge. But now with the rainforest brush in this area, with the same settings on the brush, we can just start to scribble in and behind some of the greens that we've already got. So we can start by doing that. Just work quite freely, scribbling it in across the areas that we've already done. You can see now the benefit of not having done too much of that. And it's currently at the lower end of 2%. Let's put it up slightly higher to the higher end of 2%. And then I'm going to press lightly as we get off towards the edge. But I definitely want to, at this point, start creating a kind of shadow part. It's almost like this is creating like a bulk of green things growing. And then because it is forming a large mass, then it creates a shadow. Or it casts a shadow on the rest of the, the areas. So we can go over this a few times, just really solidify up that kind of shadow area. I don't mind if it knocks back for the largest part, quite a lot of that color underneath. 
not completely. We don't want it to become the same color as the dark area there. We want to leave enough room to start to suggest some kind of stonework as well. We can just bring that all the way across and just circle it in. Press more lightly as we get towards the edge so it can fade in and out. Something like this. And that already is starting to be quite dramatic and I quite like the look of that. But we can push it even further, no doubt. Let's go over that area a bit more. Make that really strongly vivid. But let's work on the highlights again. So let's go back to layer nine. But we're going to push it even further. So we've used the fifth color. We'll go for the sixth color now. Still with the rainforest brush, but lower on the 2% and still at the 80% strength. So we'll just zoom in and we'll be a bit more careful. We're just creating a top edge now. We want to just eliminate any of that dark color along that top edge. Again, just rotate as necessary, ease and comfort, but we'll move that all the way across. And again, even just the suggestion of that light color all the way across. Again, he's just bringing out the vividness. These greens are a lot warmer, more saturated more vibrant than the greens now in the background as you can see that is going to be a crucial part of the illusion you can't use the same kind of greens throughout the scene you need some variation just to create a sense of atmosphere distance perspective tone and color shifts are the, the most crucial way to assist in creating the illusion of distance and we can just bring some of those highlights down a little bit into some of the lower areas perhaps i'll turn it down even more the lowest part of 2%. And we can just tease down a couple of areas of that vibrant green into these lower areas, but not so much. We're just doing it as a kind of fragmented little tufts. Again, just bring it down, but not too much of it. And as we get further up, it starts to coalesce, bunch together, and block in that upper area more significantly in this color. Again, just zoom out, take in the overall effect. Make sure you're not overdoing it. If you do overdo it, well, we have it as a block layer. Obviously it's not attached to anything else, so we can adjust it. You can do the double finger, tap backwards, three finger to go forwards again, play around with it. You don't have to use the eraser. You can immediately undo what you've done with a double finger tap. Naturally using the eraser when you've got layers and layers of detail proves a little bit difficult, a little bit tricky. So just be mindful of that. We're going to move to the next color, which is the seventh color, if you're counting along. Same settings, but this is even more vibrant. So we're going to initially reserve this just for the very edge once more. And this is a beautiful kind of color to bring in here. Really more vibrant, much more zingy. Burst of really fresh, vibrant green in here as well. And sometimes I will change the blend mode on our layers and I'll change the blend mode from normal to add, but it's not really necessary in this image. We're just using the vibrant colors instead and we can build it up that way. Whenever I build in kind of sunlight and those type of impressions, then I really like to change the blend mode, but it's not actually necessary for this. We'll just go across the top with this really lovely vibrant green, maybe go over it a few times in fact, we'd go to that layer, tap on it and put on the alpha lock. And that way we can go right up to the very edge now and just be really untidy and just significantly reduce the impact of any little rogue, stray, dark sections now that might just still be holding on there. So we'll just get rid of those. Wage war on the little dark sections there at the top. And then again, we can just bring it inward from the edge just a little less even than the other colors. We don't really want the vibrant greens down in this area. We'll just bring it down a little bit. And that's starting to really build up a nice look, I think. Concentrate on that top edge. Makes sense. We've also got a really nice, even warmer color, the eighth color along. And we're going to use that sparingly, but just a hint or two of that. But not overly much of that at all just a bit of it at the very kind of peak and that's probably enough there and we started to get that impression really quite vividly now i think that works i'm going to go to my layers i'm going to go to layer 7 and create another layer above that so layer 10 is underneath that version of layer 7 layer 7 and 
layer 9. So it's the third layer down, but it is now layer 10. We're going to go back to the airbrushing. We'll go for the medium brush for this. Go to our colours. We'll go for the first colour on the middle row. 3% size, 100% opacity. And really, I just want kind of banister, a rail to go from either side of the bridge. So we're going to judge it from this area and just do it maybe about here. And then something similar over on this side too. And it's like a post, so we can bring it down somewhat. Maybe a collection of stones, posts. And then we're going to have, we can just do it in one curve, going all the way across, hold it. And then you can continue to adjust this. I just want it peeking out at the top there. I don't want it to be too apparent. Let's try that curve again. Try and do it by hand. Do it as best you can. Have it joining there and there. Yeah, and I think I'm a, a bit happier with that. Again, you go to this the transform and just move this around until you're happiest with it. I don't want it to be a major feature. It's just there as an additional little thing. It's all very overgrown anyway. We're going to do just some posts at intervals. Some of them you might not even see that much, but there you go. And we're going to return to the organic rainforest brush. Perhaps just go skip the black, go to the fourth color, 2% two size, 80% opacity. And let's just start to build in some texture in this back area as well, just to make it slightly less defined. And then we're creating a little bit of a silhouette of leaves, I suppose, at this point. Slightly different impact than these have. So if we keep some of the darker colors on this section. Like I say, because of the really vibrant background there, it has a slightly different impact and a hint of a silhouette kind of suggestion is actually not a bad idea. But then we're going to move along to the fifth color. And again, just focus it more at the top edge a little bit. Nudge it along. All the way across. Then we can go to the sixth color. And we're just repeating. Similar to what we did on here, really. But it, as you can see, it can be quite quick. Let's just turn it down to the 1%. We can have some splits and take it in slightly different directions. But again, just concentrating it along the very top. Imagine sort of vines twisting round a little bit that's that's fair enough along to the seventh color perhaps not the post but certainly along the railing there i'm not using the alpha lock for this i think this is a fairly quick look that we're going for keep it kind of rough i think it's quite effective and then we'll go for the warmest color at the very end again we can just run a pass of that across Maybe just soften it in on that post there a little bit and there and there just so it's not quite as vivid that works i'm going to return to layer seven on this particular area i'm going to go in with the rainforest brush again we really are using this brush a great deal within this tutorial that's somewhat times the way it goes and i think it works the better for this one first color on the middle row maybe just one percent size 80 percent strength and then i'm just going to do some Plant life that's just clinging to the edge and coming down, trailing down from that edge. So you're going to get some of it highlighted in the really shadowy parts, but then it's emerging as a kind of silhouette compared to its background. You're getting that nice mixture of highlighting in the really dark areas, but also creating a silhouette there as well. You can do that along the edge, anywhere where it's just a bit untidy there, just go over it more. It's not a problem. These are just the areas that are really kind of localized around it. We can go in with the second color and we can add that just to strengthen it up in places if necessary. We'll go back to the first color on the middle row and we'll go in with the inking studio pen. We're going to put it to 10% size, 80% opacity strength. I'm just going to build in suggestion of some of these vines just hanging down. Maybe just have one kind of hanging down like this. You don't have to do too many of these. I 
Just a few. Now I'm going to go to layer 7, tap on it and put on the alpha lock. I'm going to switch to the airbrushing medium brush. Um, I'm going to go back to the first colour on the middle row for this detail. 2% size, I'm pretty low, maybe about 20% strength. And then just from the very edge, I'm going to start building in some suggestion of the colour coming out here as well. So start with the very edge perhaps initially and we've got some stonework here that we don't want to lose so I'm just bringing some of that colour back out a little bit more as we come further down certainly I want that colour to be lightened up again I don't want it all to be completely dark let's go over it a few times you don't want it to be exactly the same colour as the colour next to it maybe just stay a hint darker We'll get it much closer to it, I think is useful. We don't care about the bottom section, we're going to obscure it anyway. It's just this point really where it kind of curves around and becomes the straight edge again. Just blend it in there a little bit. Again, this section is almost as light now as the bit next to it, which was that initial colour there. And we'll do something similar over this side. So concentrate over here, build it up. And again, I'm starting at a low opacity, so it builds up that texture more and more. It's that nice kind of mottled look. If we did it at a high text at the high capacity to begin with, we'd have a much flatter look, which is not really what I want. And then just sort of creep it up here, blend it in a little bit, have it trail off. In fact, we've gone up too far on that, so I'll just dial that back a little bit. We don't want to go too far up there. It's easily done. I think that works better. And then going to return to the second colour on the middle row. Still with the same brush, lower part of 2%, in fact. Yeah, 1%, why not? 50% strength. We've still got the alpha lock on. And we can start to perhaps build in some lines here. And we're going to have them at a slight slant as we go around. And they're going to be more noticeable in some areas and less in others. And it's going to follow the kind of curve a little bit. So these are going to be slightly pitched. As they come further down, they're going to be slightly more horizontal there and there they're going to go around and they're going to follow that kind of curve like this and you won't notice the ones i've just added but you do notice them in here and here these two areas again i prefer to keep that quite subtle it just you know with architectural details it's best to be just suggestive rather than getting bogged down in the absolute accuracy unless you're looking to do a really highly detailed and architecturally kind of accurate piece which is not the purpose of this image. We're going to go back to layer 7 and we're going to use the same brush and the same colour and well we're going to kind of marry up these details. Again we can keep it kind of rough, the stone can be broken into and split into chunks, it can be kind of wobbly, imperfect, but we're just carrying on that kind of idea a little bit and I'm going to obscure it, I'm going to let it disappear into the green areas anyway as we come down here we're going to have these kind of stones all connect up a little bit again you can have varying shapes and sizes i'm not looking to create anything that looks perfect at all i want this to look pretty ancient and pretty Kind of primitive in its kind of construction although arches are generally quite impressive i'm also going to go along this edge and just nibble upwards wherever we've got that kind of divide push it up a little bit maybe erode little sections there and i realize this color is just a note lighter than the very black color that we've used and honestly it doesn't make a great of the difference if we wanted an exact black color we can go to here tap and hold it we'll add it to the end of our color palette why not it wasn't there initially, but don't worry, on your codes and on your colour palette, it will be there. I'm adding it mid-tutorial. Sometimes that's the way it goes. I'm just using it now to push up along that edge, just so it's not as noticeable against that black. I think it actually, I was in the middle of saying it's not a problem, and then I looked at it and thought, yes, it is. So there we go. We've eliminated that problem anyway. I think I was just trying to convince myself there. And then I decided, actually, I didn't like it. So there you go. Got rid of it. 
nibble away at that edge, make it uneven, irregular. We may as well just give in to the fact it's not going to be perfect, so I think just work with the imperfections, make them a feature, make them a bonus. And I'm also adding to this shadow area here, darkening that up a little bit, join it up with the splits and the stone as it goes around our little arch. And then on this side of the stones, perhaps we've got it on quite strong opacity, so we need to turn it down, maybe 10%, and then just start to build in a bit more of these shapes in here as well, just squiggles and texture that comes off from the edge. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the top layer, layer nine, and create a layer above that. So now it's above everything, it's layer 11. I'm gonna stay with the airbrushing, but go to the soft brush, back to my colors. I'm gonna use maybe the second color on the bottom row. I'm gonna put it really low down to 1% size and about 20% strength, opacity. And well, I just wanna bring out these stones a little bit more. They're pointing upwards and should catch the light a little bit. I don't wanna make huge feature of them but I think they should in places just catch the light and the separation of these stone blocks should be kind of made much more clear just in these bits I think is sufficient perhaps I'll turn it down even further to 10% zoom in here and I can just circle in some texture and taps and kind of create a nice mottled look on that stonework scribble it in don't need to make a big job of that at all quite subtle but it's effective maybe there's one or two areas here that are just catching the light a little bit too we do have largely just shadow there's nothing wrong with the stone being revealed just in a couple of areas i think that works We'll come back to some of these foreground features. I think that actually the background needs to be resolved. It needs to be, I like the top area, but needs to encroach a little bit more underneath the bridge. So we'll go back to our previous layers. Maybe go back to layer five, go back to our colors. We had these colors that we began with. So maybe I'll start with a third color. Go to the soft brush with an airbrushing. 4% size might do, 40% strength. And I'm just gonna start bringing in this color initially, creating like a rock face, as I was describing earlier, further into our scene, but we just can't see it anymore. Sometimes getting the, the position of things is a little bit tricky until you've got the other things in play. So we'll just bring this further down. And so, some of that initial texture we created really isn't that noticeable anymore. In fact, we could probably go to layer two, tap on it, go to the transform, and maybe just pinch it down Whoops, we need to go to the freeform to do that, pinch it down. And then some of that texture there, that line is there. But if we pinch it down so that we can now see it in that area, whereas we couldn't when it's up there, could we? Not so much anyway. Bring it down, you'll notice it just a hint more there. And that works better. It's a really subtle thing anyway. I suppose if we wanted to increase the strength of it, we could slide and duplicate it. And then you do notice it more, which kind of works. So I think I will stick with that. I will just merge them together to reduce the number of layers. Tricky to do, there you go. Now you can see it, it does have more impact, which is perfect. But we will go back up to layer five. We're working on that. Started to encroach more down in this area. That's a bit vibrant, that color. So we'll move along to the fourth color, maybe 30% strength. And then within those kind of areas, again, we're just bringing some shapes in here. Go over it a few times as it starts to get closer to the bridge. Same over here as well. And I'm just circling that in a little bit. Might return once again to the organic rainforest brush with this color, 4% size maybe, 30% strength and well, we'll continue to kind of bring this down, help kind of blend it all together a little bit in these lower areas. Just circle it in. 
will indeed kind of soften it all in, in that background area. We don't need to overly define that background, I don't feel. Might be something that we spend a bit longer on. I do tend to do extended versions of these tutorials. If I think I want to add more refinement into that area, then that's something I might do then. Let's see how much we can get done within this main tutorial first. Let's go over that bottom area a little bit. Blend it out. I'm going to move along to the six color at the top and then just a slight darker tone as it gets closer to the bridge, as I was saying before. And then I kind of want some more foliage on that side. This again is behind the, the bridge layer. So I'm going to go to the first color on the middle row, 2% size this time and 50% strength, maybe just this area now. I'm going to have a bush that's just right here. Really much more of a foreground detail, maybe more of a feature on this side too. Quite like them. Maybe even a little bit of the black, why not? Or almost black, the second colour on the middle row. Still at 2% size, still at the 50% strength. Add a hint of that in there, not too much. It just contrasts nicely with this bridge colour, the stone colour. I think if they're both exactly the same colour, then you kind of lose one with the other, so make a little bit of a difference. I think that works. Okay, go to our very top layer and we'll create a brand new layer, layer 12. And we're going to do some foreground shapes now just to really kind of pretty much complete the image. Not to say this is a small element. These are going to be quite significant in detail too, but let's get on with it. I'm going to go for the airbrushing medium brush, 5% size, 80% strength. And we'll go for the last color here. So the eighth color on the bottom row. I've started to use a really dark color in other areas. So it probably makes sense that we now have this we can't have this being lighter than the dark part of the bridge because this is further closer to us. That's a bit of an oxymoron, isn't it? Uh, closer to us, not further closer to us. But there you get the idea. So we'll create some little areas perhaps that are a collection of stones and other features. Maybe one coming here. Just as I was saying before, I didn't care about the bottom edge of that bridge. And you was planning to obscure it. So just reduce this down to 3% now. Create a bit of a cleaner point. And then retreat back in this area. And another little ledge here, perhaps. Put it back up again, 4 or 5%, and we can just start to soften it out. I use some lighter colours to blend that in a little bit better, but initially that's fine. Okay, it looks a bit strange at the moment, and that's fine. We'll go in there and we'll refine it. So the first part of refining it is going to be switching, I'm sure you can probably guess at this point, the organic rainforest brush. First color on the middle row. 2% size, 50% opacity. And then I'm just going to start circling in some textures from the edge. We have more of that neutral kind of muted color creeping its way in there again. We don't want to lose that nice kind of blended out edge. We'll reintroduce that at least for the corners a little bit. Quite like the kind of soft look of the edges of this. It's almost like a dreamlike impression then. Rather than it being too crisp, we just have it come into focus in the, the central areas and then just kind of fading out. And I think that really works. Create a new layer for this. Layer 13. Let's not get overly superstitious, I'm sure it would be fine for us. Um, we'll go to our colours, we'll go to the fourth colour, low on the 2%, 50% opacity. And we'll just bring some patches of this slightly more vibrant green across. We'll have a nice top section up here as well. So little platform areas, similar to what we've got here, we're creating that kind of look. I'm going to reduce it down actually, lower on the 2%, it's still 2%, as I've probably explained in my other tutorials, even within the same percentage, there's quite a high degree of separation of size. Top end of 2% and lower end of 2% are practically a different percentage, really. So it is important to take note of where on that sliding scale it is exactly. Make some further kind of similar to what we did in this distant area. We're doing a repetition of that kind of texture down here. 
Again, the top edge of some of those shapes. They can join up as well. We'll come to the other side in a moment, but we'll focus on this side first. Maybe move along to the fifth color, zoom in, and yeah, begin to just push the edge with a more vibrant set of greens. In fact, I'm going to skip that green. I'm going to go to the next one. We'll go to the sixth one. Let's just really push this down to the 1% size, really concentrate our line along that edge a little bit more neatly. Zoom out just to see the overall impact that that does in fact have. Along here too, we can further build it in into various points along here. Could even put it up a notch or two, 3%, build in some larger textures here perhaps more rounded shapes for kind of bushes and things that are closer to us. And let's start building in from this side a little bit as well, just suggestions of it initially. Let's concentrate on this side, so let's back down to 1%. Feed it across this area. And importantly, we need to leave large sections of black in this. We're going to do like stone sections, so it's not quite as architectural. It's not architecture really, it's just like a collection of cliff edge or stone edge that it's been eroded away and it will have like a look of individual broken stones but it isn't architectural in the same way that this is. But it is going to sit next to it in a really nice way. But we need to leave those and preserve those black areas in order to do that. I'm just going to move along, I'm going to go to the seventh colour, push that vibrant tone. Not evenly across the whole thing you might just want an area like that for example that catches it maybe just a little bit almost like a dappled light kind of effect so it catches some areas more than others so use it unevenly i think that can be more effective i'm going to go in for the stone work we'll come back to the grass i'm going to go for the fifth color on the bottom row i'm going to also go to the airbrushing soft brush in fact no one i'll go for the medium brush two percent size 20% strength. We'll just create some blobs in here, circle them in. Varying shapes and sizes. If these look like bricks, then it's going to look too architectural. And we're not really going for that look. It's just a kind of rock texture that is all fragmented and it's going to be subtle initially, but we're going to use some different colors to bring that out more. So we'll go for the second color on the bottom row, 1% size. And then we can go in there and just start to tap in some textures along our rock. And maybe the 20% opacity is a bit strong, 10%. This color is obviously a lot brighter, so it will be more noticeable. Just think about how the light is gonna impact bits of our individual little stones more than others. We don't want to make them too uniform. Really important to remember that we don't want it to look too architectural compared to the background. Keep it a little bit random. In fact, I might just stay with this color and skip that kind of green color. And this color can do most of the kind of heavy lifting for us. Keep zooming out, checking how it looks in connection with everything else. Zoom in, add some kind of random elements to this. Sometimes these features aren't going to look 100% zoomed in, which is why we just take in the overall look. We're going for the general look and impression with my tutorials. It's always the way that we are. Believe me, I, I love to work in a really hyper detailed way, super realistic and at times and kind of almost photographic. But we have, or I dedicate, usually about an hour and a half to two hours worth per tutorial in terms of the filming, so that by the time that it's being watched by yourself, that we're down to about 45, 50 minutes, sometimes up to an hour. But I don't want to make it too much more than that. I'm also aware that by the time that you are watching this and pausing it and following the steps, it can become a multi-hour endeavor. So I don't want to just push this to a ridiculous extent. We could spend a week refining rock textures and really, I don't think that's worth everyone's time at this point. Let's create a collection of random shapes. Sometimes it will form blocks 
maybe join that up so it doesn't look like little bricks. And that's what I'm trying to avoid really, trying to avoid the, the sense that we have bricks. I want it to look more natural than that. I mean, sometimes natural formations do actually look quite architectural and like geometric shapes and I understand that, but I don't want to compete with what we've got there too much. I do want it to look more natural. So we'll go across to this side, maybe create some geometric looking shapes for bits of it over here, but not too many. Perhaps we will return to cooler green. So we'll go for the fifth color. We have quite an open apparent dark area here. So we're up to 20% again. Create some blocks. And the good thing is when you're using a lower percentage, you can just map in some general shapes initially before you go in there with the lighter colors, a stronger opacity, say for example, and really start to define them more clearly. So let's just get some big blocks in there perhaps, just to make them really irregular kind of shapes. So they're not going to be confused with the slightly neater and more perfect man-made forms. And again, I say man-made, we're in a kind of fantasy almost environment. Who knows who's made them? Could be trolls? We don't know. Could be dwarves? We're not to know. Put some shapes across. I actually prefer the look of them over at this side compared to that. Maybe we can go in there with the eraser. If you feel like you need to just remove any areas and go back over them again. Be brave, be prepared to be destructive with your work to push it in the directions you want more. I just, some bigger shapes, some bigger blocks, as well as smaller ones, I think looks better actually. So we'll go back to the organic rainforest brush again, back to the greens, we'll go for the fifth color on the middle row, start to push, in fact, I didn't like that color, did I? So it was the fourth color, I do beg your pardon. And again, we need to put it to something appropriate. So 1%, Size, I'm actually going to push it up to 70% opacity, just in the interest in speeding this along a little bit more. I think once you've kind of got the idea, you can be a little bit bolder, a bit more aggressive in your approach, a bit less tentative, but you need to just build up your confidence before you can get to that stage and that's fine. I think if you've done enough of this texture at the top and over at this side, you can get to the point where you're just getting impatient to get more of it in there. So fine, turn the opacity up. You can always press lightly or you can press on harder and you get a different kind of effect anyway. I was initially considering doing a stream. That might be something that I approach in the extended version, but for this one, I'm going to keep it as a kind of like open cliff area crossed over to another open cliff area. I'm also going to return now to the seventh color. What I won't do on these tutorials is leave you hanging. So if I won't get you to halfway of an image, I will help you create a completed image, but any image we work on is always possible to extend, always possible to refine even further. But I do get you to the point where we have a completed image and that you can show people and you can be happy with. So it's not essential that you follow along with my extended tutorials at all. I don't want to leave people with that impression. I'm just gonna to go to the seventh color on the middle row. Yeah, so it's not essential at all that you go and check out my extended versions over at Patreon, but if you've really enjoyed the experience here and you're happy with your overall image and you just wanna keep learning, then that's what my extended tutorials are for. A few more highlights in here. Blend it off towards the edge. Maybe bring some in from this edge as well. I will perhaps just go back to layer 12 with the black, the eighth color on the bottom row, with initially the airbrushing medium brush. I just need to go in there and just higher strength, 80%, 1%, and just secure up a really nice crisp edge for some of these rock shapes. We don't want it to be too fuzzy. And again over at this side.
and I'm also going to go to the organic rainforest brush and well I don't see any reason why with a 1% size and 100% opacity we can just in addition to the rock create some kind of foliage areas that just soften that edge in places too maybe just a couple of these corners have plant life that are just sticking out create a bit more of a sense of silhouette I think that works we could also go back to the inking studio pen with this color just create some vines that kind of come down from there a little bit I think that's quite nice too Something like that. I think that just is a nice little finishing touch for those areas. I do think that perhaps in that background area where we we had, where was it now? I'm lost track. I think we're on layer five. Go back to that layer. Go back in with the organic rainforest brush. Find a suitable color, probably the fourth color. 3% size, 50% strength. And we probably just need to lock in a little bit of the bottom area there soften that in so it's not quite as light at the bottom i think that will work better on that layer we can probably go to the adjustments gaussian blur and blur it in five percent go to the top layer again where we've got this detail just a bit more with the greens so still with the rainforest brush go for the fifth color on the bottom row three percent size 50 percent opacity and just Soften in from some of these edges a little bit. Bring some of this more neutral green in there just to soften it in. I think that's actually quite a nice thing to do. I might just return to the second colour on the bottom row. Turn the rainforest brush down to 1%, 50% opacity. And maybe just create a slight highlight on here so it's almost like a stone look for these. Mixed in with the green colours anyway. Make them stand out a little bit more. 2% size. 80% opacity and maybe just one or two light colors that just cut in front of this just to change up the, the look, the tone, the colors of it. I don't want it to be too monotonous. I think just some lighter colors just sprinkled in just to break it up a little bit, just changes the clarity, changes the look. Some slightly different impressions in there and I think that goes a long way. I would say that that initial line on that bridge perhaps just is a little bit too crisp. So we'll go back to layer seven, tap on it and turn off the alpha lock. Go in with the eraser, put the eraser on the medium brush with an airbrushing. 1% size, 100% opacity. And then maybe I could just create a slightly more irregular look with some of that. Again, I don't want to overdo that because I'm actually removing some of the green areas as well. Any areas like that where it's just really isolated and exposed, we can just change it up a little bit. And I think just nibbling away at that shape really does help. Final thing I could probably do at this stage is just to add that to that dream quality. I'm going to go to the very top layer, then go to the wrench symbol, add, copy canvas and paste it. And it should now put the whole image on the very top. And don't do this unless you're absolutely confident that you've finished. But then I'm going to go to the selection, freehand, I'm going to draw around, preserving the kind of central area, the outer edges. So close the loop and we've got really an area selected there, but I actually want to invert that. So go to that, invert it. Then we'll go to the feather and slide it up to about 40 cent. Then go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to slide the blur across. And you can see now it's just blurred it along the very edges. You don't need to do too much of that. Put it along to about about six percent and then just deselect everything and you can see it's created a really nice blurry impression around the edge sharp focus in the central areas and a nice blur around the edge you can see the difference if you just move it untick it take it again you might prefer it with the sharper focus everywhere but i'm just showing you a different way to actually kind of present it okay i'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point don't forget to hit subscribe if you've enjoyed this give the video a thumbs up it really helps out the video and the channel in YouTube's algorithm, so much appreciated. Otherwise, I hope to catch you back here soon.
Bye for now.